Oh my gosh. Welcome to part three of Daily 687. Thanks so much to Liquid TLO for playing amazingly in WCS, thereby making my job easy. Ugh. Ugh. Face dives. Uh, we've looked at some, I would call them smaller twists on this TLO notion of set yourself up to do nice scouting, then be a little bit more aggressive at the third than you would normally be. And we've seen different ways in which it's panned out, all of which have been conducive to boners. In this particular game, we're going to see the most different of them all. As Grubby is going up against TLO on Alter's M Stronghold, Grubby took second place in the group, very thrilled to hear about that. This third base is just so easy to defend. So freaking easy. I mean, you park the Mothership Core here, you see all the different attack angles. You can sit your bum up here. Even going for Nidus Network in the back is fairly hard because it's so close to probes. So you don't really have a good angle to do Nidus Networking. What about... Um, you know, some of those Roach Hydra aggressions? Well, again, it's very difficult to get a complete surround because the Colossus can literally just sit there. So how does it work? Let's watch the same opening from TLO, again. He's gonna go pool and hatch at the front. Why? Because creep spread, calm yourself down. And, oh, gas gets taken right around the time that this base gets taken, ooh. Dudes go in the gas, you know it gets delayed. Third queen by a little bit. He only got two. Zergling speed. Getting constructed. Two stay in the gas. Hmm. Looks like the same build to me. What we're seeing out of Grubby is perhaps the most typical build on this map. Stargate, Insta, Expand, and Colossus. Colossus. TLO responds by getting dudes. Building a couple of lings. Lot of lings. So many lings. TLO has a vague suspicion that he is up against some kind of player who is, in fact, gateway rushing him down. And then he goes, oh, wait, no, you're not. Oh, you're not. You're totally not. Oh, no big deal. I'm actually going to go to the TLO cam. TLO, with all these speedlings, spreads himself out so far and wide across this map. He sees freaking everything. Everything. He gets a stalker. Lings moving up. We're starting to see the drones come in. Those drones that... We're in the gas, the two of them. They allow a layer to go up when it can, when it can go down. Some extractors, hmm. Sees the third. First thing TLO really seems to always do is to check the third. He checks the third, you heard, and look at this, more lings coming up. Why? Why would there be lings coming up and coming out and doing things? Well, he's either going to be doing some sort of two-base shenanigans where he attacks us, or he's going to be expanding. If he's doing shenanigans where he attacks us, he's already committing to phoenixes, and you know what's really good against phoenixes? Zerglings, because the damn zerglings can't get lifted fast enough. But if he's expanding... If he is expanding, probably not going to have enough to deal with a lot of speed zerglings. Tilo does this in like every freaking game. And look at this, going for 1-1 one, one upgrades. He's going for a very late game focused army. Still doing this attack. Still building lings actually. Still chilling below 70 drones. Like that. That. Oh, infestation pit. You know what's probably going to happen? Swarm hosts. No! No swarm hosts. None at all. Here's where I don't like this tab. Units lost is the total amount of money that has gone down. And we can argue whether or not TLO has done an effective job assaulting this expansion. By using this thing, this units lost tab. Well, I don't know, there's lost mining time and all this and blah blah blah. I want to emphasize again to you, the one resource that Protoss really freaking needs is gas. And without this expansion, he is definitively behind on gas. You can't say necessarily so much about the mineral side, but man is this dude behind on gas. So 
We're going to be making lings. Getting up a hive, getting burrow, getting 2-2, two -two, making lings, building tons and tons of lings, just barely hitting 70, and lings. Lings and lings and lings and things. Lots and lots and lots of lings. So many freaking lings. He's getting harassed. It's annoying. It's a little bit of a pain. Chilling at approximately the same count. Hmm. But Zerglings continue to move in here, continue to try to make attempts to harass. Very atypical to see this many lings stepping in. Exploiting little things like a Colossus in the wrong place at the wrong time, as well as sentries and an immortal. This is really good. We're spending our minerals to deal gas-based damage to our enemy. Much to our delight. We'll be setting this one up. And then straight Ultralisk tech. So we're seeing... Something completely different. Something very, very unusual. Going for Ling Ultra into Fast Broodlord. Wow. Such unusual. But in um in a more conceptual sense, it's still the same idea. Moving around, scouting a lot, using the versatility of the speed links to check out what's up. Trying to exploit how weak a Protoss third is. Especially when he opened Stargate. Lings are doing a great job of it. Delaying very much. So that went very poorly. Again, in this tab, it looks like Grubby is doing fantastically. But this has been almost exclusively minerals lost by TLO. Versus largely gas lost by Grubby. So yeah, it's just Corruptor, Ultralisk, Viper. We're seeing the Drenal Glands. Corrupt their deal with this pain in the butt stuff. These phoenixes are being really efficient. Wow. I just don't want to spend too much time on this game. The big part was part two. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And we're moving forward, going straight for a greater spire. Yeah. All right. Plus three for lings. Oh, and ultras. Yeah, and brood lords. Spitting on all the things. And with just two ultras, in he goes. Oh wait, buildings. Buildings are like the best counter to melee units, is Protoss. So Grubby can get up enough time to get like the massive Immortal Colossus Archon gateway stuffs going up. I mean, look at the pace that TLO's been keeping up. I mean, he is like right outside the front of Grubby's base. Constantly. Here's where I'm torn about building another macro hatch, or just taking another expansion. I think it's probably better to go expansion. Um, <laughs> largely because TLO's doing it, and I'll just say that what he's doing is probably the best decision. Makes a lot of sense. Just as before we spoke about the importance of monitoring a third base. There's the importance of monitoring a fourth base. Blinding Cloud works very nicely with this force. You don't really need Vipers with Ling Ultra in the same... Or you don't really need Abduct with Ling Ultra in the same way that you need it with um, Roach Hydra. Because you're like super up in their face anyways. Knocking stuff down with the Ultralisks. Ling's getting in, dealing a lot of damage. So you're seeing clearly Grubby is just an absolute kick-ass player and is, like, able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this. But that's what's great. Grubby is not... Uh, or TLO has set himself up in a position where an excellent player like Grubby is still struggling a good bit. The Ultras, by the way, are not really the big damage dealers. They just guarantee that the force fields get knocked down so the Lings can actually do the real damage. A la this. And then usual, just excellent positioning from TLO. And we're speeding things up, because I want to take questions, and then I'd like to watch some TV. Watch TV. A doo-wop bop. Hello, zealots. Goodbye, zealots. Hello, expansion. Goodbye, expansion. Everything's dying very fast. Because TLO is amazing. Don't forget about corruption. It's a good spell. Probably forgot about it. Do -do -do. 
So this is the song that doesn't rhyme. You know, there was really one offensive by Grubby, and it got squashed so quickly. Tielo makes this look so easy. 1A after 1A after 1A. GG. Taking questions now. I'm also going to take a bite of my food now. My healthy, unbelievable healthy green meal that gets filtered out by my green screen. Mmm. 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 That's my new favorite thing to say whenever chat is unlocked. <laughs> the gates are open. Hmm. Hmm. Day 9, what are you eating? A burrito salad from Chipotle. I'm going to lose so much weight. Dude, probably 50 pounds. Gone. Two months tops. What could Grubby have done? I think Grubby was in an amazing position. I think he done a he did a very good job getting to a spot that was equal, and then just kind of um, he just kind of fell apart um, in that one attack. I mean, his immortals got split up, and then the immortals got just this happened. Zerglings around the immortals, stalkers were over here, and then this happened with ultras and links. So uh, you know it happens. Hmm. Where did I get this shirt? From TeamLiquid.net. Grats on the weight loss. Well, it hasn't happened yet. How dare you. I feel cheated about the green screen. I'm sorry here. Let me just... There we go. I'm sorry. I'm not in a room. <laughs> oh... Opaistone, day nine. Would air units have been more effective against TLO's comp? I mean, that is a very... I mean, it's a great question, but the fact is... Yeah, who, who didn't realize I was green screening myself? That's good. Um... <laughs> um, I mean, it's a good question. But it's a really complex one that I don't think I have any ability to answer, like, quickly. I'll probably have to just do a show on it at some point. But, yeah, I think it would cause just a completely different scenario. Here's my salad. Probably not going to eat all of it because it's huge. It's got chicken and guacamole and lettuce and cheese and sour cream and black beans and tomatoes. I'm going to be eating so much of this. Mmm. No one's asking any questions about Zergbrush Protoss. They're like, nah, hold on the fuck on. Shh, on. What? What? What on earth in the ass? Yeah, let's see if we can take a trip to hell. Let me add some media f uh, files here. Uh, let's see. Hmm, there we go. Let's get some of this behind me. Uh, yeah, so let's uh, let's do this. Let's go ahead and crop it on the X. Cropping. Uh, let's crop. Uh, oops, excuse me. Top. We got to crop. There we go. We're gonna pull it behind here, and then uh, what do you know? All right, cool. Welcome to hell. Um, is that literally a green sheet? Mm. It's a chroma key fabric, is what we'd call it. Tortuga says, day nine, how many nidus worms is too many? Um, there's not really a clear number, but if they're dying, it, it's too many. Place them safely. You want to be losing almost no nidus networks, unless you are on like five base or more.
Z3L asks if the blink was a mistake, almost certainly, in that final game, yeah. I'm just going to take one more question, man, then I'm done. <laughs> Covert Muffins, this is day nine. Part one and two, you mentioned that TLO avoided going for upgrades as the plague. Uh, and I am having a hard time nailing exactly why. Is it due to the timing of his attack? Maybe to dying to early aggression? Maybe something else? Uh, yeah, it, it, it's, it speeds up at the pace of him doing stuff. So what I would encourage you to do to, to feel this, do the build, pick your favorite build, or whatever you want to mimic from this, do it and get an early upgrade, and then do it and don't get an early upgrade. And what you'll find is that if you do get it early, it feels kind of slower to get your layer, and then slower to get up the hydras, and then you're a little bit low on gas to get the muscular augments, and uh, you don't quite seem to have enough drones to be able to support both, and then a little bit of time passes, and then you have fewer units than you did before. But if you just cut that out, then your layer's coming faster, and then the hydras and the roaches, and you actually feel that sort of pace kick in. So that's it. I'm going to go. I'll see you tomorrow for the Hearthstone Dectacular. Ah! I'm not in my room anymore, guys. It was a pleasure.